It's said that life is a journey best traveled with friends. Along the way are adventures and misadventures. But if you're Ms. Mel's friend, you'll find some Ms. Adventures. Join Ms. Mel for Ms. Adventures with friends and explore the paths of friendship. Hello to you. Yes, you. I want to speak to you personally. We may not be friends. Circumstances haven't allowed our paths to cross until now. Well, let's start off with introductions. Who are you? Really, tell me your name. I'll wait. Now, by some miracle of cyberspace, I may have heard it. Well, at least I can pretend I did. For now, I'll just call you friend. Hello, new friend. And it's good to be here with you, old friend. Because I'm sure there's some of you out there. I have friendships that span decades. Uh, six to be exact. And there are friends from way back that I haven't seen in a while. Uh, there are also new friends like maybe you are right now. So let me do a quick rundown of who I am now. Because, old friends, I may not be the same as I was years ago. My name is Melanie, but I had the moniker Ms. Mel put on me many years ago by students when I was teaching a local college. I've been a college instructor, freelance writer and graphic artist, retail business owner, secretary and bookkeeper, basketball coach, t-ball coach, curriculum developer, and leadership mentor. I've got way more degrees than most people feel comfortable with, and I love learning. In fact, I'm working on degree number six. I'm definitely from the southern United States, as you can tell, and I've always lived here despite the heat and the humidity and the insects. My current gigs are as podcast developer, and professional nanny to two delightful little people. I love my cats and dogs, and I delight in watching birds. I'm also a follower of Jesus Christ. Now wait, don't turn me off. What I have to share in this podcast may be influenced by my faith, but anyone can enjoy and glean from it. Okay, that elephant in the room is labeled. Just stick with me. My most rewarding positions have been as a wife to one husband and mother to three wonders who are now all grown up. And I'm a person who loves her friends. Now that didn't happen too long ago. You see, the idea of good friends was a bit foreign to me while growing up. One of my parents struggled to maintain friendships, still does for that matter. And so I didn't have a positive role model for friendship. Sure, I had schoolmates and church friends, but no one I really felt close to. I went to a small private school, which was a blessing and a curse. Got a great education, but I was at the receiving end of a lot of bullying, and I still don't know why. What it taught me, even as a young girl, was to observe. Stick to the corner, face the door, and watch how people interact. Life eased a bit by the time my 14 classmates and I graduated. Over the years, we've managed to stay in pretty good contact, but there are only a couple I would really call good friends. Yeah, wounds leave scars, and sometimes scars bring back too many memories. Where I felt most comfortable and made some actual friends, albeit short-term friendships, was at summer camp. I don't know, it's something about hiking, cooking in the woods, slogging through the mud, singing silly songs, staring at starry nights from the top of a mountain, and dodging Mr. No Shoulders, well that's a snake by the way, that forges bonds. 
and some of those friends I can still reach out to almost 50 years later. Mm. That camp was special to me, and it planted a seed that would sprout many years later. Oh, believe me, you're going to hear about that. Next stage of life, college. And it was a blast. I had lots of friends. Some would say they were conflicting friendships because in junior college, I was involved with athletics as a team statistician and theater. Not two realms that cross paths very often. Moving to a larger university, it became all theater. The theater is an interesting place to develop friendships. They're often short-term and develop during the trials and fires of productions. Literally, we did have some fires on occasion. Didn't burn down the building. A college theater department is an awful lot like an episode of Survivor. You've got competition. You've got love interest, jealousy, maturing, learning, culling out those who can't last. Building bonds that get you through the tough stuff, like exams. Those are formative years and difficult, although somewhat protected times. I think back on those friendships fondly, and I'm very proud to know some of the friends who went on to illustrious careers, but the passage of time sure does make a difference. I imagine I could pick up right where we left off with a couple of people, but others... Well, if you put us in a room together, it might be tense. I've changed over the years, and I don't think like I did in college. And I certainly don't hold to the same morals and viewpoints that I did then. I'm hopeful that if I ever eventually run into any of those former friends, that we can maintain a mutual respect for our differences and a fond mutual memory of those times. Post-college led to graduate school and marriage for me. I honestly have very little memory of friendships in grad school. Names and faces are vague in my memory. It was a tough time. It was a busy time. It was a focused time. Marriage and career took precedence. Then, within a few years, I had a choice to make. Already in my early 30s, I had to decide between a Ph.D., and an M-O-M. -M. Choosing the latter was the best choice I could have made. Suddenly I had an excuse to meet other women who were in the same state of exhaustion, exasperation, piles of laundry and toys as I was. And for a season there were extra kids, mom stories and chaos in my life. In this season I can finally say I had a best friend. We enjoyed getting the kids together and hanging out. I could share my hurts and my laughter with her. We both went through some tough times, and even after she moved away, we stayed in touch. I desperately wanted to keep the friendship thriving. But a sudden and devastating event in my life drove her away. I was hurting emotionally and physically, but was eventually able to forgive my offender. My friend couldn't forgive, even though to her it was a second-hand offense. I've never been able to understand this, but I forgave her too, and when we run into each other, it's amiable. So on to a season of getting kids through school, living on a tight one-income budget, and getting through one day at a time. When darling daughter was old enough and my boys were no longer interested in baseball, I began to volunteer with the scouting organization my daughter was in. It brought back memories of the skills I learned at summer camp, as well as an opportunity to share those skills, but still no close friendships. It was a lonely time with kids involved with school and activities and hubby involved with work and keeping our old house going. I had a few acquaintances at church, but no one to call up for a play date or a cup of coffee. No one to laugh with or cry with or reminisce about our friendship. The organization my daughter was in began to go a direction that didn't jive with my beliefs, and I was at the end 
of another season. However, a couple of those acquaintances at church began to needle me about joining an organization they volunteered with and that their girls were involved in. All they had to say was they needed me and wanted my input on a summer camp they were creating. So darling daughter and I went to camp. I observed, I took notes, and I was rekindled in my love for camp. We went on to join the local group with these ladies and their daughters. I became a leader and my daughter began to make lifelong friends. What I didn't realize was I was making the friendships I'd always craved. By the next summer, I was completely ensconced with the group, their mission, and their camp as a program director. That was in 2009. And after a few years of sweating, serving, laughing, and crying in the summer heat, we gave our camp the slogan, Building Friendships Since 2009. If you ever get a chance to send your child to a safe and inspiring summer camp, do it. If you yourself get a chance to volunteer and serve at the same camp, do it. You'll not only come home with dirty socks, arts and crafts projects, and a few mosquito bites, you'll reap a reward of indelible memories and lifelong friendships. Friends that sweat together, stick together, that initial core group of ladies who allowed me to join them in creating a legacy in that camp have become my dearest friends. Through 15 years of friendship, we've raised our kids as a village. We've pulled together for financial hardships, career changes, major achievements, kids getting married, kids having kids, health concerns, the loss of a spouse, and the loss of friends in the next circle out from ours. All of it has bound us closer. And although we are all currently at a strange season of life with adult children and some needy elderly parents, I know I can reach out to them anytime for any reason. Now, I may not be able to get them to respond to a group text, but they're always a phone call away. I dearly love my friends. I've learned so much about caring, kindness, and sacrifice from them. I've spent years watching how others build and destroy friendships. I've seen how the lack of friendships at any age of life can be devastating. We need people. We need friendships. And my friends, old and new, I hope that this podcast series will inspire you to evaluate your friendship needs. Know that you'll have friends if you're willing to sacrifice your own agenda to reach out and serve someone regardless of their similarities or their differences. Paths cross in the most unlikely and unpredictable ways. See the opportunities and seize the moment to develop friendships. I'll enjoy sharing my friends with you in the episodes to come. It'll be good to rekindle those friendships to grow them even more just through sitting down and chatting about friends and friendship. Listen to a few of our upcoming episodes. And if you've enjoyed it, let us know through Facebook or Instagram by giving us a good thumbs up. You can send your questions to us there through Messenger or through Instagram chat. And we'll do our best to get back in touch with you. You can let us know about your friendships. Now go make a friend and be a friend. I'm Miss Mel with Ms. Adventures with Friends. See ya! Ms. Adventures with Friends is a production of Depot Street Studios and Rocket 88 Broadcasting. Music is from Storyblocks.com.